Let's have a museum date, hindi sa labas ng country, but just here in Davao City. That will not just amaze us, but really teach us a lesson on how to take good care of the environment. We are so fortunate today dahil finally makakakantuhan po natin ang nag-iisang Uncle D, Mr. Daryl Blatchley. Hi, Mr. Nice Daryl. Uh, Uncle D, can I call you yes, Uncle D? Yes, like growing up, I see you sa morning show teaching us about animals. And then now, finally, we are so honored. I'm so honored to have you on Ken TV. Dagan kiko question sa imuha, Uncle D. Because Uncle D can speak Bisaya. Yes. Fluently. So pading Bisaya, pading English. Either. Okay. I'll start with your childhood dream. Is this really your childhood dream to have a museum or it just happen like along the way? Pag ikan bata pa ko, hindi ko mga wildlife mahina na. Yung dream ko bata pa was to have a museum. Hindi pag trabaho sa museum, but to have a museum. But to have your own museum. And so yung collection growing up has always been enough na more small ng collection para sa museum. Mm-hmm. And at the US 2001, at the US in the hunting goods store in the US, and I was working in the US, and I was working in is your partner that was with me, are they from the Philippines? And I said, yes, how did you know? He goes, oh, they're all the same. And the person said, oh, he goes, well, you Americans all look the same. He goes, no, no, you don't look the same, you're just all the same. I said, excuse me, sir, what do you mean? Do you mean Asians are all the same or just Filipino? He goes, no, Asians are all different. Filipinos are all the same. I said, what do you mean? He goes, kung nai tayo Chinese na pasal do, tala mga hayop mo wala na unsa. They have preserved elephants, giraffes, porosy yung skin ng taxidermy. Pero sabi niya, kung pasal mo Filipino, mor na eksensya lang, pero naingan ni mor na ignorante. Kasi kita na mga giraffe niya mo tanda do kung dinosaur. And he goes, doesn't the Philippines have education about natural history? And you think about it, yung education talaga sa Filipinas sa mga libro is picture inana katakor sa whale, dolphin, wala jud ng lugar pwede pa kita yung actual. You can go to the Crocodile Park, kita ni mo Buaya, Ungoy, ato ni mo Philippine Eagle Center, kita agila. Pero wala jud ng lugar basta grow up ni Modri sa Pilipinas, parang kita ito yung mga animals ng actual talaga. Sa hainay na matay man sa baybay, yung mga baliya na, pero dili dyan, unless napuyo ni mo sa tangat, dili dyan na kita. So, pag uli ni sa Pilipinas, 2008, na ato ko sa National Museum sa Manila, mutan ako yung trabandi dito, asa daw yung natural history ng collection niya. Uh-huh. At that time, wala pa ng natural history museum. Sabi niya, naaman sa third floor. And paso ko yung kwarto sa third floor, I was embarrassed because there's a room about this size, and I had more in my living room in Davao City than the National Museum did parang collection niya ng natural history. And it was like, at that time, naingan na ginaw sa akua, ayaw sige tago, imong collection sa imong balay lang. Igamit ang imong collection, pag himo ang imong museum, parang kita ng publiko, unsa ng himo ang ginaw, but at the same time, kung dili kami ng antiman, what we'll lose? Whether it be the whales, dolphins, the tarsiers, yung mga hayop na wala, tungo dili na kuhan caretake ng mahatang na ginaw sa Pilipinas. So, fast forward, 2012, nang open ito yung museum, and at that time, it was just yung third floor sa ito yung building with 150 specimens on display. So, that's 2012. Fast forward now, 2024, we have over 6,500 specimens on display. 6,500 And we have specimens. more even being added still every day. Mm-mm. Pero ang problema daw is, Hindi na ito yung government funded. We don't ask funding from the government. We parang ito. Everything the museum does is to want to intern the museum. Mm-hmm. So it's something that it is talaga labor of love, blood, sweat, tears. Grabe dito pag trabaho parang himo ito. And we didn't build it parang na uh, one of my favorite words is in the Philippines. They're like, ah, tama tama lang. We just so so lang. If you're going to do something and you're glorifying God's creation, hindi na pwede pag tama-tama lang. When the Philippines is exporting the best doctors, nurses, architects, engineers, parang paghimo ang mga lain ng countries, whether it be Dubai, Singapore, we're exporting the best. Pero why do we settle for tama-tama lang parang sa Pilipinas? So, when we built this museum, it was done in a way that when the Filipinos now go abroad, basta na visita ni Adri, Abot sila sa abroad, dili sila, ah, oh, 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 dili mo rin ignorante. 
They go, ah, na na mina ni sa lahat. So muanad niya, they're they're expecting nice things na parang sa Philippines. By showing them animals not just from the Philippines but other countries, they learn to appreciate it. Hindi sila pag ignorante about mga hayop, and then they learn the consequences like by basura sa sa kanal or sa sapa na abot na sa nada na matay mga hayop dere. And so by taking care of your natural resources here, the money will actually come to the Philippines instead of your overseas Philippine workers na bungkal ng Philippine family structure by making the Philippines nice and taking care of what's here the foreigners will come here and spend their money here Uncle D, you are awarded with the Dato Bago Awards here in Davao City, like the most prestigious award given to a Dabawenyo. So I am curious, like how did your journey here in Davao started? I was 15 when my parents moved to Davao from Thailand. I grew up 10 years in Thailand and then in 1995, Nabo okay. Mindari sa Davao City. So my parents are missionaries, in fact, they're still here in Davao. They came here as missionaries, so simply, bata pa mi abot dali na kwan. It wasn't by my choice, it was God bringing me here with my parents' ministry. And you have a choice in life. You can either love and totally take care of the place that you've been put, or you can complain, oh, I wish I was here, I wish I was there. Pero God put you in the Philippines to take care of it while you're here. So, pag abot mi dali sa Philippines, my first job, in fact, job na kwan was hobby at the time, was 15 years old working as a tour guide sa Davao Kakra Park. Okay, our house was Panorama Homes, malapit lang sa Crocodile Park, and at that time it was more bago lang na piggery lang na convert na parang Crocodile Park. So it was growing up dito do sa mga boy dito sa Crocodile Park, and so it was something that was already there because pag transfer kita sa Thailand, nahilig ni mga hayop sa Thailand, mga elephants, crocodiles, and snakes. So pag abot dito sa Davao, it continued dito yung passion. And so dito nang kwan pag grow up dito sa Davao tungo sa akong parents na missionaries, I went back to the states for about eight years, went to college in the States and then had my own business and also worked as an aviation fuel engineer with helicopters in the States. So it was a wide variety of bouncing around pero it always brought me back to here. Yeah, so this is your home. Oh, you are yeah. a Dabawenyo. Dabawenyo, yes. <laughs> it's an honor. And so when they gave me the award, they're like, congratulations, you made it, you know, what do you... And, and with the award, it's for people that have worked their whole life. Na parang naabot inana. And for me, I didn't look at it, okay, now I can settle down. It inspired me to do even more. Yes. It's, as my dad would say, it's a keychain. It's a key on a keychain. You use it to open more doors. You don't just say, okay, I got the award. Na kentin pa na. It pushed me to do even more and it still continues to push me to do even more. It's like a bigger responsibility for you that you're carrying now and I believe you're really living to it. I hope so. I hope so. I, I do have my faults. I do. I know yeah. I have my faults. In 2019, you were awarded by UNESCO as number one for Asia in environmental education on plastic. Yes. And I follow you on Facebook for Facebook friends and I always see your posts about or some of your even sentiments, your frustration about people not really taking good care of the environment, especially on mishandling plastics, throwing plastics anywhere. How are you handling the feeling of being frustrated? This year is now almost 30 years that I've been in the Philippines. And I have two sons I'm getting ready to get married again. And I decided, Bahala, yes. Sinchala, Bahala na Philippines. Kung gusto mo yung damo ng Filipino, bahala yan. I'm down. I will continue to do my education ways this. Pero kung gusto mo yung damo sa Tagalabo, Ukraine, bahala na yan. It's your country. Love it or don't. Destroy it or take care of it. It's your country. I'm tired of sige pag-ego mga isog mga tao sa ako na ingan na bastos ikaw ng foreigner hawa diya ikuli sa inyong lugar ikaw di na tagadaday sige bahala diya gusto niyo mo sige pagbaha gusto niyo mo ingan dama ko ng Pilipinas bahala diya I will do what I can in my area here I will enjoy the Philippines to the utmost with my sons pero di no bahala na diya I'm tired I'm tired of getting in fights over dama ko mga tao that do not love their own country, I will continue to do my best for I've already decided, Bala, I, 
since 2019, I've been working on one of the Advanced Samo Museum. And they can say, oh, well, it's a long process. Okay, what's it going to do? I'm going to go to the problem. Either we act now and we change the Philippines for the better for the next generations, or we make excuses and be able to get the problem. Then that just means that they really don't care. And if they don't care about the Philippines and how it happens and what's happening with it, then why should I not as a Filipino? I'm not even Filipino. Why should I try to push somebody to take care of their own country if they themselves don't even care enough to do it? I'm tired. I don't want to get killed because Gusto Siya So I will do my best here. I will continue to educate through the museum and I will find other places that will actually want to make change. about the museum. How does it feel na from that childhood dream of having a museum, you are living in your dream now. You have your own museum. It's a lot of work. It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of work. But it's not something beyond them. You have to continue to make it better. When we built the museum, it was yung third floor, 1150 specimens. And pretty much every year to two years, Sigi Pagnai expansion of the museum, night renovations, because to continue to do the best possible, you have to continue to improve. And so we go through, we redo display cases, we put in new ones. You have to go through and repair ones that have been damaged for over due to time and add expansions to it so that so that it stays relevant para education, but also display that say that. But every night, sir, before you go to sleep, how do you feel? Like seeing that you have so many guests coming here, seeing they, their faces, their reaction every time they come out of the museum, how fulfilling is that for you? It makes me happy when the reactions of the people that are here on the second floor, the second floor or even the first floor. Wow, wow, wow. That means that they're starting to try to figure out how how you did what you did. And yet, it's the same fascination that I had ever since I was a kid. So, it makes me happy. I didn't do this alone. Team, the staff that we have here, the OJTs, the full time staff, because I could not do all this by myself. It takes a team to keep it running, to do the tours and everything. It's tiring at times. But the overall satisfaction is we we're happy to be seeing a change. As in, if you're able to reach them and then they start seeing it, and even Bahala Kung they take what they learn from here to other parts of the Philippines. We have that instant responsibility already. Yes. Or a challenge to ourselves that the next time I want to see like a real bird. A real whale sharks, yeah. a real lion, a real snakes even. So not just like mga bones na lang sila. You have like hundreds, even thousands of like specimens here inside the museum. What is that one special specimen here displayed or the most unforgettable one for you? Every every single one in here has a story to it. It's everything from specimens that were donated by a former president Estrada to even you know, ones that were in areas that you literally were going, am I going to get out of this alive? So every single one in here are special in their own ways and where they recovered, whether it be a partial skull of a weasel found in a cave way in the middle of a desert in the United States while looking for um, petroglyphs on the walls cave paintings from American Indians, finding Indian arrowhead shards, even a small skull, partial skull, was still memorable for me because it was something that was part of that journey from a recovery of a specimen. We have a new specimen downstairs that was donated during pandemic time that was found here in Mindanao. It's a leg bone of a stegalodon elephant that was found while they were excavating a balloon or well here in Mindanao. So everything has its own special history behind it. And it's in a, fairness, kay yeah. Uncle D, ha, memories pa ni amang story yun, sa mga specimens here. And we are so fortunate, guys, because we are filming this on the second floor of the museum. Just strictly no videos allowed, but Uncle D allowed us to set up here for this interview. Earlier, I had a chance to go on the third floor, and there's one specimen there, Uncle D, that for me is really life changing. Like, I'll not mention it, para makirisila, but I want you to share 
like the story behind it why merong ganon na specimen the one about time ah merong ni isang specimen there is a museum her name is Lola and she represents time because an average tour of the Risa Museum takes about 45 minutes to an hour. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if one person or if 100 people are passing, there is a tour guide for all the group. And you walk around, you, you learn about the different specimens, why they died, where they come from. And but the final one is Lola, and the reason why we have her here is because it, we all have the same thing in common, whether whether it's Americano, Filipino, Chinese, whatever. We have the same thing in common, even kung dato, kung pobre, and that's time. We cannot buy more time for our life. You can, you can put the money in the bank and say, oh, I want more time on my life. You don't get it. When our time is up, that's when eternity begins. Eternity is heaven or hell and our relationship we had with God while we were alive. So that's why Meron Si Lola Dito Sa Third Floor is because it, if we've spent the time to show you everything that's here in the museum and we didn't stop to let you reflect on your own personal mortality, and your relationship to God, then we have wasted your time. So it's very important. The time that we have while we're alive affects where we go for eternity, but it also affects the next generations. How we have the willpower to make changes, to make this time now better for us, will also impact the next generation. So important to you with your time. Yes, so kung unsan a specimen, si Lola, that's for all of you to find out. I'm always in awe and believe you because I have passion because not all really have the same passion, same energy because I believe this is really your mission. This is why you are here in Davao, why you are here in the Philippines. So just keep going and we're always here to really support you in our own ways and that is one way to really visit the Bone Collectors Museum. So now let's invite them. We are located in Davao City, Barangay 76-A, Bukana Trading Boulevard. Ayo mo hadlog ng garsada, Ligi. Gamay ng garsada. Tangan mga tricycle. Pero buutan mga tricycle drivers. Yeah. Kung ikaw relax, buutan siya. Pasok ni mo dito. We're open Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Palihog, bisita ni mo direk. Do they need to reserve ba if gusto sila mag-visit or pwedeng walk-in? Do walk-ins, basta 10 to 5 p.m. Pero kung mga field trips, we request them pa pre-booking because our our priority here is quality over quantity. Okay? Yes. Kung direct lang yung madawatanan, ma-overlap na dili na hatang yung quality. Mm-hmm. So again, yung time is important. So yung quality is important that we give them. So kung field trips, kailangan lang sila pre-booking pa lang na kwan. Pwede pakita sa Facebook sa Bone Collectors Museum. Okay, so just reach out to the Facebook page the Bone Collectors Museum one to two weeks ahead yes. of your planned schedule for mga, pag, pag mga field trips but walk-ins pwede really, really kaya really actually high. even or while we're really filming high. this nato yung mga walk-in visitors yeah. naging entertain sa ato ang mga staff here so we come and visit the Bone Collectors Museum because I mean for me ha siguro for others po Asia but really a life-changing experience because for the first time ako personally I've seen so many like na ading mga ingot naga exist na mga ano yung mga specimens na mga ani na mga hayop and the challenge really of coming here or after you come out or you go out of the museum that is the challenge na gusto na ako makita to siya na buhi pa or in real life na asya sa nature na asya sa kabukiran na asya sa kadagatan so we have that responsibility to really take good care of our environment. So to close our Kentuhan Uncle D, may mga bata who will see this Kentuhan, this interview. So what do you want to tell them? Especially about really taking good care of the environment. Ano na siya? Like, gas-gas na kaayo ang challenge of really taking good care of the environment. But now, more than ever, is really the time for us to really take good care of the environment. Sa mga bata, ikaw lang ng future sa Pilipinas. Ikaw pwede pang disiplina para ikaw ng antiman. Pasing candy wrapper, yung piso-piso lang. Or yung mga takot mga pasura. Ikaw pwede padlongin mo mga papa. Parang dili mo gahi ang ulo. Parang na antiman ng Pilipinas. Parang patako na ni mo na apay mga nindot, mga hayop na kita doon sa Pilipinas. So, pasensya sa mga bata na medyo kahugaw ka ron. Pero kung ikaw ng disiplina, ikaw ng antiman, kaya limpyo kayo ng Pilipinas. So, ito lang. Ikaw ng kaya ng disiplina para nakita mayo ng Pilipinas. Music